This is the first time you've opened up with such a raw account of your struggles. Well, hopefully I can um, help some people. It's not a story just about the Kardashians or drugs. No, it's really a story of triumph. For Lamar Odom, triumph on the court came naturally. It was down to the goals. He was a basketball virtuoso from an early age, a college phenom. 30 feet away, jumper in the air, he's got it! Who became one of the NBA's biggest superstars. Lamar Odom, Odom backs down the shot. You could have been the best player of your generation. Probably so. He seemed to have it all, a booming career. And a hit reality show with his famous wife, Chloe, part of the juggernaut Kardashian clan. During that time that you were on those reality shows, you were hiding your drug use and your sex addiction from Chloe. Yeah, well, you marry, you don't want your wife to know that you're sniffing coke in. Sex, infidelity, and drugs. What was your drug of choice? Oh, cocaine. Lamar was living a life full of dark secrets. How many women did you have sex with? I don't know. You wrote 2,000. It was a lot. But that, I mean, to, to put a number on it, that'd be really narcissistic. How long do you think you were able to be faithful? Maybe months at a time. My marriage, I was faithful for a couple of, first couple of years. It was a reckless path of self-destruction that nearly cost him everything. Is he conscious? No. And Lamar Odom is rushed to the hospital. Fighting for his life on life support. The Kardashians rushed to be by his bedside. He was knocking on death's door. You had 12 seizures, six strokes. Could you even fathom what, what your body had been through? No, I mean, I really still can't. All my doctors say I'm a walking miracle. Is your memory affected by your coma? Yeah. Physically, though? I mean, yeah, your body's really been through a lot. No, no, but I could take anything. I've, I've, I've played professional basketball since then. When was the last time you did cocaine? Whew, I can't even remember. I can't even remember. It's been... Um, a long time. So you're not high now? No, did I sniff cocaine before this interview? No, there's no more coke in my system. How do I know you're telling the truth now? All you can do is believe me, and if you don't, then there's nothing I can do. Anxiety. You do s smoke weed still? Yeah, it helps cool me down. When was the last time you smoked weed? Um, yesterday. Now, for the first time, Lamar Odom is sharing raw, intimate details about his triumphs and his tragedies in a new memoir. You called the book From Darkness to Light. What does that mean to you? Uh, my grandmother used to always say, what's done in the dark comes out in the light. And so is something that I hold dear to me. To understand Lamar Odom, you need to go back to his childhood in Queens, New York. His mother, Kathy Mercer, was his guiding light. My smile, that unconditional love. He says his father, Joseph, was a heroin addict. You wrote, I didn't know it at the time, but he was handing me a blueprint to follow, and the things I hated him for, I would become. Yeah. Eventually, his mother left his father. She and a young Lamar moved into his grandmother's house, where they shared the same room. Are those some of your fondest memories? Yeah, waking up, turn in the morning, smelling her breath. <laughs> Sweet. When he was just 12 years old, that bright light dimmed. He remembers holding her hand as she lay dying of colon cancer. I was real hurtful, you know. What happened to your heart that day? Well, it got heavy, and that's when I just kind of just said, like, school, really. That was like one of the biggest mistakes in my life. Despite his poor grades and dabbling with marijuana, he became one of the most celebrated high school basketball players in the country. You are hot commodity, as you say, right? I mean, women are throwing themselves at you already, and yet you stick with your homeroom high school sweetheart. What did she represent to you? Queens, my neighborhood, high school. Even though the, the time apart, you know, I always felt connected to her. By the time he was 18, that girlfriend, Liza, got pregnant. And Destiny's born. Yeah. Lamar Jr.'s born. Then it's time to be a man. What does being a man mean to you? Oh, just being responsible, giving back, being held accountable. On the court, Lamar became a college hero for the University of Rhode Island, taking his school to the NCAA tournament with this buzzer beater. Oda, 30 feet away, jumper in the air, he's got it! Lamar Oda has won it for Rhode Island! 
I can't even compare it to anything. It's like I was on top of the world that day. His dreams of reaching the NBA well within reach. Lamar Odom from the University of Rhode Island. Looking forward to being an L.A. Clipper. It's going to be a great year. Can't wait to get to L.A. and start working out. I felt like I arrived. You know, I, I just wish I could have had that moment with my mother. Because on the outside, you're on top of the world. Yeah, and on the inside, inside, just a hurt little boy still. But his memory of her blurred in a haze of drugs and sex, a new lifestyle thanks to a five-year, $63 million contract with the Miami Heat. He describes his first exposure to cocaine at the exclusive Shore Club in Miami. He says he got high with a stranger who performed oral sex on him. Oh, it was like the unleashed of a demon. Unleashing a demon. Mm -hmm. What did the place. drugs and the sex do then to you personally, your personality? I mean, just every, I, I want everything extreme. And extreme is, of course, too much. Lamar's drug use, a major hurdle between him and another pinnacle, the 2004 Athens Olympics. He already had two drug suspensions in the NBA and had been smoking marijuana. Qualifying for the Olympics required a monitored urine sample. Lamar's solution, a prosthetic penis. Me and my friend bought it. He peed in it. Clean urine. Yeah. And it worked. By any means necessary at that point. After one season with the Miami Heat, Lamar was traded to the Lakers, and Liza got pregnant with their third child, Jaden. But just six months later, Jaden was found dead in his crib from sudden infant death syndrome. When he passed, though, I couldn't, I couldn't really like just leave the, the hospital. I stayed with him for about three hours and just sat there with him. What was your reaction when your son died? Oh, shock. It's crazy, because I don't even think I still cried about that one. He keeps his son's image close to his heart. What made you want to do a tattoo? Something I can't forget. Yeah. And literally, you look in his face every day. Yeah. Still reeling from the loss of his son, he eventually met the woman who changed his life forever. Chloe. 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 Yeah. You end up in a hotel room, uh -huh. and she refuses to have sex with you. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's a true story. And you talk for five hours. Probably one of the first women who said, no, I'm not going to well, have sex with you. It was you. crazy because Chloe, Chloe, she has the same eyes as my mother. So when I first met her, I was kind of like put in a trance by that. But I didn't even really know who she was. They got engaged within a month of dating. She married me? What the hell? Oh, my God. <laughs> Nine days later, they were married. More than three million people tuned in to watch their wedding on Keeping Up with the Kardashians. You are husband and wife. Tell me what it was like being on camera, keeping up with the Kardashians, paparazzi everywhere. That's I mean, I loved it. You did? <laughs> yeah. I mean, a red carpet is rolled out for you everywhere you go. What's not to love about that? But Lamar says he wasn't faithful to Chloe. He would often pay strippers for sex. Why is money exchanged for sex in your mind? You trying to, like, pay for privacy? When we recently asked the Kardashians about Lamar's behavior, Chloe and her family declined to comment. During their marriage, he says his drug use became rampant. The book also describes an incident where you're in your man cave and you basically have a freak out. You were on ecstasy and coke. I was sure that people were coming for me. You were paranoid. I was paranoid. I took a golf club and swung away. I began smashing the walls to find them. I was going to expletive find you. I screamed. <laughs> Chloe walks in, and you say to her, I'll expletive kill you. You don't know what I'm capable of. Yeah, I'm pretty sure she had to be scared. I'm thinking about it now. Like, I couldn't believe how I was treating that queen like that. Do you feel like you owe her an apology? Yeah, her and her family, big time. Chloe filed for a divorce after six years of marriage. She, at that point, kicked you to the curb. Yeah, well, she, like, took care of me. In my house, like, I had everything I ever need, wanted and needed. So it was like a kid being kicked out of his house. It was like a 12-year-old losing his yeah, mother to cancer. Yeah, again. Yeah. A heartbroken Lamar was also struggling to regain his NBA glory, training in Las Vegas. Lamar headed to the Love Ranch, a brothel near Las Vegas. You just wanted to escape. Yeah. He says he spent a long weekend there, but just slept for most of it. On the fourth day, he was found unconscious in his room. And he's really pleased because he's got uh, blood coming out of his nose, white stuff coming out of his mouth. By all rights, you took lethal doses. 
of whatever substance it was. I didn't take drugs that night, that day. You don't have any memory of taking drugs. No, I didn't. But you also don't have much of a memory of any of it. The God's honest truth, I didn't take drugs that day. I didn't sniff cocaine that day or do anything else. But how could it be that you didn't do drugs that night? Somebody made you slip me something. Happens all the time. But you were drinking. I was drinking. Conscious of that. Yeah, I was drinking. Yeah. But I know I didn't do drugs. Lamar was rushed to Sunrise Hospital in Vegas where he was in a coma. 12 seizures and six strokes. His lungs collapsed, his kidneys ruptured. You wrote, maybe I wanted this, but that wasn't important. Do you think subconsciously you wanted to end it all, to kill yourself? No. No. Hell no. Hell no. Mm -mm. I understand that. You cross that line, like, there's no coming back. Hi everyone, George Stephanopoulos here. Thanks for checking out the ABC News YouTube channel. If you'd like to get more videos, show highlights, and watch live event coverage, click on the right over here to subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to download the ABC News app for breaking news alerts. Thanks for watching.